so welcome back students after your tricks in inorganic chemistry now i thought i'll start with your s block chapter so i'll be doing uh, the complete revision of s block then we'll start solving different different types of questions which are very useful for your neat exam done so whenever uh, whenever you're supposed to study for s block let us see what are the important points you need to remember first of all when i speak about s block the elements which belong to s block are lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium isn't it yes so these are the elements so what what should you remember in this uh, chapter let's see first of all when i have to go into the properties of s block elements first important concept of this one is diagonal relationship so you need to know the concept of this diagonal relationship of s block elements diagonal relationship so basically when i have to speak about diagonal relationship the first important thing let us write now what what are going to show diagonal relationship in group 1 this is group 2 this is group 13 and group 14 this is how is the diagonal relationship shown element of group 1 group 2 group 13 and group 14 done and the period would be period 2 this way and period 3 right so this is the thing now in group 1 lithium element right in group 2 beryllium and magnesium element in group 13 boron and aluminium element group 14 is a silicon now lithium is going to show a diagonal relationship with, with magnesium and its properties beryllium is going to show diagonal relationship with aluminium and its properties boron is going to show a di diagonal relationship with silicon in its properties now what why is it showing basically we're going to speak about diagonal relationship based on two important concepts what are they let's see the first concept uh, which you need to remember for diagonal relationship is i'm going to speak in terms of electropositivity that is ability to donate electrons electropositivity and i'm going to speak in terms of the next concept that is <coughs> polarizing power these two are the concepts which i'll be speaking in terms of polarizing power right fine so when i have to speak about electropositivity done right so when i go from left to right in a period what will happen or when i have to speak in terms of group also so let us see so i here uh, if i have to speak in terms of a period right so in a period when i have to speak that is from left to right what will happen what are the concepts which you should remember in left to right charge increases right ionic size decreases when i go from left to right because it keeps adding to the same shell ionic size decreases correct now when i have to speak in terms of a group right so what is happening ionic size okay group is from top to bottom t to b so what what actually is this here ionic size increases when ionic size increases what is the next thing you should remember you should remember ionic charge also increases when so all uh, this uh, the these properties al almost you know they are uh, uh, like the polarizing properties are almost similar so with this concept with these this concept this concept how am i writing right so in a period if i have to write electropositivity let us write that point and see so in a period when i have to speak diagonal relationship you need to remember this so electropositivity in a period uh, what will happen it will decrease Hence, the di dimension, the diagonal relationship also, they just, they are linked. Correct, ability to donate electrons. So, this is happening, fine. When I have to speak in terms of a group, right, electropositivity increases. I already gave the reason why, isn't it? Right, so when I speak in terms of polarizing power, right, so this is in terms of electropositivity. Now, if I have to speak in terms of polarizing power, so polarizing power, remember this concept. So, in polarizing power, what actually is this? Polarizing power, I'm writing in terms of PP. It is directly related to ionic charge. This is the first concept which you should remember and it is inversely related to ionic radii. Remember this concept and square of it right fine so when i have to speak about this polarizing power in a period what is happening from left to right as i said it's the same thing charge increases ionic such decreases that means when i have to speak in a period charge i said charge increases isn't it when charge increases okay let us write that i said charge increases when charge increases it is directly related to polarizing power so polarizing power also increases done so in a group 
in a group what did i say i said ionic size increases ionic charge increases so what will happen to the polarizing power it always remains constant because both are increasing the same rate it always remains constant so this is what's the concept first concept which you should remember when you're learning s block element remember this right so next next important concept which you should remember is anomalous behavior of anomalous behavior of elements so anomalous behavior of elements of which one are you studying you're going to study anomalous behavior of the first element of the groups now the first element of the groups are going to show anomalous behavior yes so this anomalous behavior is shown by which which group the first element of group 1 the first element of group 2 first element of 13 first element of 14th group 15th group 16th group and 17th group all the first elements are going to show anomalous behavior so why do they show anomalous behavior the first concept is smaller size this is the first concept which you should remember smaller size next would be when the size is smaller it's very difficult for me to remove electrons so what will happen ionization enthalpy would be very high correct when the ionization enthalpy is very high that means indirectly if i say smaller size what is the next concept which i have to relate higher electronegativity this is very important right and next important concept absence of d orbitals or vacant d orbitals this also counts because of these properties the elements show anomalous behavior yes so this is the concept which you should remember now these concepts let us see the important properties of alkali metals which you should uh, remember during the exams because alkali metals and alk s block includes alkali metals and alkaline earth metals isn't it right so let us see what is the important thing which you should remember now so let us start first important thing when i have to speak about alkali metals right group right in this alkali metals what are the important physical properties right. when i have to speak let us speak about different different things let us make a column like this and remember all at a stretch what will happen right uh, in a group right all these are groups so the first property is atomic and ionic radii remember this so when i have to speak about atomic and ionic radii and alkali metals the first group that is lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium in a group isn't it so this is a group right group one when i have to speak about listen atomic radii increases why does it increase what is the reason because in a group from top to bottom new shells are added right this is okay this is done when i have to speak about ionization and talpi right uh, again in a group as the size increases uh, so i said as atomic radii increases right so when atomic radii increases what will happen okay let us say this ionization and talpi decreases why does it decrease because as size increases the magnitude of screening effect also increases isn't it magnitude of screening effect screening effect also increases also increases right so the size increases number of shells increases the number of shells increases easy for me to remove the electron right that's why it is uh, ionization enthalpy decreases now when i have to speak about electropositivity that is ability to read electrons that means metallic character so now what will happen when i say electropositivity or metallic character uh, it that metallic character means the ability to donate electrons isn't it when it's donating electrons what will happen to donate a metallic property metallic property it increases why does it increase what is the reason low ip ionization potential i can apply less energy right when the energy uh, when the ip is very less what will happen to the electrons greater tendency to release electrons greater tendency to release electrons this is right right that is that is why when i have to say lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium uh, francium okay francium is radioactive cesium among them cesium is most ep is most electropositive it can donate electrons more when com when we compare to others right now this is over let us see the next property the next property which you should remember is hydration enthalpy i already told in my video that is uh, hydration enthalpy the trick in that video what did i say hydration enthalpy or ionic size ionic size is inversely related to hydration enthalpy this is a concept right so based on this what is the order first uh, ionic size is inversely related so lithium 
plus is great hydration enthalpy is small because the size is larger hydration enthalpy will be lesser other way down if the size is smaller hydration enthalpy will be more so size is smaller hydration enthalpy will be more for this lithium sodium potassium rubidium and cesium this is the order which you should remember right next when i have to speak about the next property very quickly oxidation state right we very well know the show plus one oxidation state they can lose only one electron why is this that means it shows m plus one plus ions this type why is it showing because ionization enthalpy is low i can easily remove electrons from the outermost shell when so hence it's easily easily so so first ionization enthalpy first ie is low with less energy i can remove but it when it comes to second ie remember second ionization enthalpy when i have to speak is very high very high why because <coughs> it's very difficult to remove that the extra the leftover electron because it it's almost close to the inert gas configuration means that particular thing let, let me take an example lithium sodium let me take sodium suppose it is atomic number 11 1 is 2 2 is 2 2 p 6 3 is 2 okay 10 and 1 3 is 1 now if i have to take out when i take out one electron this becomes na plus now if i try to remove one more electron this is inert gas configuration isn't it yes that's why it's very difficult to form uh, m plus 2 ion that's why you don't find m na plus 2 isn't it so second ionization enthalpy is very high hence formation of m plus 2 is difficult it will not form m plus 2 right remember this concept now next important thing after oxidation state let us see metallic character next concept so in the next concept when i have to speak about metallic character that is same like electropositivity now all alkali metals are the typical metals isn't it the typical metals what is the reason for this why are they donating electrons all right why are they lustrous in nature because of low ionization enthalpy when the ionization enthalpy is low i can easily remove electrons from that right so next important thing uh, like if i have to speak about uh, what do you say the color property of that or the flame test property of that oh if i have to speak of the color property yes they are calculate metals are all colored why are they colored because okay let us see the color lithium if i have to speak it is caramine red okay then when i have to speak about sodium it is golden yellow in color when i have to speak about potassium it is pale violet in color when i have to speak about rubidium it is reddish violet in color when i have to speak about cesium it is sky blue in color why are these important yes why are they showing so many colors because the electrons they jump from lower level to the higher level and so they go from the lower level to the higher level when this electron jumps from lower to the higher level yes and after some time what will happen they jump back to their ground state when they jump back to the ground state they, they absorb light from the particular frequency and they start emitting isn't it so this is what is the reason for them to show the color property so many colors in their properties right so next important property photoelectric effect is next important concept which you should remember photoelectric effect so you all know what is photoelectric effect isn't it the ejection of electrons when a light is incident on the particular metal right so they exhibit they exhibit right so they exhibit photoelectric effect they emit exhibit photoelectric effect so except lithium okay except lithium why is that reason lithium does not show photoelectric effect due to higher ionization energy very due to high because i need a lot of energy size is very small when the size is very small it can't it's very difficult to remove or eject that electron when the light is incident yes so now the energy of the photon of the incident ray is sufficient to eject for others what will happen sodium potassium rubidium cesium right they the size is bigger and i can easily with like you know ionization enthalpy is very high so you can easily when i eject or when i supply certain amount of incident light on the surface of the metals they can easily eject electron from the surface hence remaining all except lithium so this is the important thing which you should remember remaining all except lithium will show photoelectric effect okay remaining will show photoelectric effect photoelectric effect remember that except lithium because of higher ionization enthalpy right when i have to speak about density of these particular elements so density if i have to speak yes so um densities of alkali metals are less basically right? they're very less what is the reason when i have to speak in a group correct so density in a group increases why density is equal to mass by volume 
fine so what is happening down the group atomic size is increasing when the atomic size is increasing what will happen to the atomic mass atomic mass also increases when atomic mass increases mass increase means density also increases simple as that right when i have to speak in terms of melting point and boiling point so simple as that remember melting point when i have to speak no the for the alkali metals there they have low melting point why is the melting point very low let us see because when i go from top to bottom what will happen to the size the larger atomic size isn't it larger atomic size next now when the size is larger what will happen to the strength of metallic bond <coughs> strength of metallic bond right decreases correct when the strength of metallic bond decreases what will happen to this it causes uh, the melting point decreases isn't it when the metallic bond is weak it can easily melt that that is why your alkali metals are called soft metals isn't it that is the main reason so alkali metals are called they are called soft metals why are they called just now i said the size is larger metallic bond or the strength of metallic bond is lesser when the strength of the metallic bond is lesser that means i can easily break the bond i can easily melt the bond hence they are soft metals yes right so uh, so why are the soft metals this is one of the important reason due to weak metallic bond weak metallic bond okay remember this concept yeah. yes so with this we have completed the physical properties of uh, your um, this one let me come back and do the chemical properties of alkali metals